action. Okay, so we are starting here, and our first step is to rearrange the equation so that we get y by itself. What's with the y right now is this negative 4x. So what are we going to do to move it? Please do that with me. That gives us y is equal to 4x plus 2. <clears throat> I put the 4x right after the equal sign because we're going to be graphing this, and that puts the slope in the right place and the oh. y-intercept in the right place. This one, the y is on the left side of the equation without any other terms, but it has a coefficient of 3. So we want to divide the 3 out. And we get y is equal to 2x minus 6. So we're going to graph each equation on the same coordinate plane. We're going to make two lines on one graph. Let's start with the first equation. What's its y-intercept? 2. So we're going to put a point at 2. <clears throat> the slope is 4 over 1, so we're going to use that to rise up 4 and run across 1. I'm also going to drop down 4 and run to the left and just keep doing that until it looks like I've got a pretty solid line. Okay. Now, I've been really honest with you guys that graphing is not my favorite way of solving these. I'm always concerned that if I don't draw my line exactly straight, they're not going to cross at the same point. Our second line is going to start at a y-intercept of what? Negative 6. And its slope is 2 over 1. And I'm noticing these two are not going to cross in the upper. They're not crossing up here in this region because as I graph that, these lines are getting further apart. <clears throat> They're going to actually cross down here. So I'm going to drop down two and run to the left one. And they're crossing off the graph. Do you guys see what's happening down there? Again, not my favorite method. Are we getting a clear picture of what its xy pair is here? Yeah. No. No, but I did solve this earlier with substitution because in my opinion it's the best method. And I got negative 4 and negative 14. And if you look here, that would be about down here. So yeah, that is where it's crossing. Graphing can be a really good method, especially if the numbers are close to the origin somewhere where your graph is going to be pretty clear and precise. But sometimes your ordered pair is going to be something like 32 comma 12, and that's going to be like way up here on the graph somewhere. Okay, I'd like you to turn the page. You will notice inside of our foldable here, this is inequalities, which we will do later. This has absolute values, which we will also do later. I hate them. Why are you doing everything later? Because I want you to have this one resource to look back on. But right now, we're going to move over to the very last one in here, which is another one with equations. And I'm going to give you guys a few minutes. See if you can establish <clears throat> what the equation will be when this is just equal to y and this one, and then try to graph those lines.